Quack, quack. <laughs> there is a Korean movie called Right Now, Wrong Then. Have you seen it? You haven't seen it. What Korean movie have you seen that I haven't told you about, huh? All right. <laughs> All right, strong audience today. He said, you know what? I'm going to be faceless and voiceless for today's episode. I mean, right off the bat, it sounds like a Korean movie where you date someone in college and it doesn't work out. But later on, you like your paths cross, you cross paths and then you fall in love. You know, it's right now, wrong then. I don't know. It's kind of confusing title, but yeah, it's I think they the, could do better. I feel like it should have been wrong then right now. No, it should be wrong then. Oh, right, right now. now. Not like right now as in like right now I'm like ah, sitting in a, you see, know. See, that's confusing. It should be like... Yeah. Then wrong, now right. <laughs> the movie Right Now, Wrong Then is about a love affair between a married, hot-headed film director and a tormented young model turned artist, okay? Essentially, the female lead is this artist. She's hot. She's young. She's modeling. She makes good money, shmoney. But she wants to create abstract art. Is she good? She's probably hotter than she is good at art, but that's okay. The film director... On the other hand, is a bit too confident. He likes to explode during interviews because all of these interviewers are not asking him questions that are not artsy enough because he's just way above the general population. Like, they don't even understand his creative mind. But he's also a womanizer, despite the fact that he's married. And they fall in love. These two fall in love. Director now, fell in love with a artist and yes. while well, he's married. Yes. Now, this movie was released in 2015, starring Jung <laughs> Jae-young as the hot director and Kim min as the tortured artist. You already know. If I pl- pl- plop a little picture of Kim min on the screen, you know who she is. She is probably the most well-known for her iconic role in the cult classic, the Korean cult classic, well, not like Korean cults. They weren't like sitting around watching this, but... The Handmaiden. Oh, I loved this woman, okay? She is she probably... Is she the main lead? Yes. She's one of the most identifiable Korean actresses on a global scale. But what's crazy is every time in Western media, she always makes the list of like top Korean actresses you need to keep an eye out for. She's been blacklisted from the industry. But all the Western media is like, you got to keep an eye out for this famous Korean celebrity... Uh huh. It gets it gets crazy. So this movie, right now, wrong then, did. I mean, it was critically acclaimed. It did so well. It even received international attention. And this was a career-defining moment for Kim Mini. And the movie, it was on the lower budget. I mean, the plot is not that action-packed. There weren't even that many camera angles or fancy editing styles. It's truly like an indie film. But both the actors in this one, they had to bring their whole back and crack into this because their emotions, their micro-expressions, that would be the whole essence of the film. That's it. She delivers. She eats this roll up for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and she wins awards all over Asia for it. She's getting contracts from some of the biggest brands in Korea. Like, not just like, not just Korean brands. I'm talking global brands. Every fashion house beauty brand wants her to be the face of their lines. And everyone said, it's crazy how she was able to embody the role of a troubled artist that was lost, looking for direction and praise and comfort so well, and then falls for this film director. It felt like she already lived this life, like she knew this character intimately or something. I mean, I get it. It's not the hardest role in the world. It's not like she has to pretend to be a penguin alone in the world with no one to give her pebble to. But still, she really, really captured this role, nailed it. The viewers could feel her need, her attention, her want for the director throughout the movie. And everyone was like, damn, she's so good at her job. Then the press tour starts for the movie. And everyone's like, hmm. They start raising their eyebrows because they're like, wait a damn minute. The actual married film director, the actual one that directed this film right now, wrong then. So not the guy that plays the film director in the movie, not her co-star, but the actual married director of the film. And Kim min seem really, really close. They seem to be almost googly-eyeing each other. And are they wearing couple rings right now? On oh. stage? Genius marketing yes. plot, huh? Yes, until a year later, they come out and publicly announce their affair. A bit. <laughs> a bit, okay? So they filmed this movie. Fell in love. 
Oh, and what? then they just kind of replay this whole movie in real life. Yes, yes. <laughs> like, what is going on? So everyone's question was, was she able to play that role so well because she was actually falling in love with a married film director? Wow. So she's able to cherry that channel that. This is the story of how an affair between a popular South Korean actress and the married film director of her movie ended up with one of the most iconic faces in the Korean movie industry essentially being blacklisted from major South Korean films. And everyone is arguing, are these two soulmates? Did the creative artsy director finally find his muse? Or are they just plain old adulterers? You know, you know the saying, like, the movie is based on this real life story? Oh, <laughs> Their this life story is based <laughs> on the movie. <laughs> it's like the, uh, so when does life imitate art? Yeah. Or does art imitate life, right? Yeah. There was this TikTok that I was watching about how someone kept a disco ball, or it was like a crystal ball, and they hung it up in their car rear view mirror. You're like, where are you going with this? Okay. The disco ball hanging in their car reflected the sunlight and burned a piece of their car leather. It like started a fire in their car. That's what happens to me when I sit in traffic for a very long time because my forehead has a tendency to get incredibly shiny. I feel like I could reflect so much light that the FAA should be arresting me. You know, the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration. Did you know it's illegal to point lasers at airplanes? It's a federal crime, but I could be arrested for it because my forehead is so shiny. You're like, where are you going with this? Peak tea. <laughs> I'm dead. This is the peak tea radiant skin duo. I started drinking peak tea every day for my skin. Now I mainly drink it because of the taste and also for my skin. Um, Tiffany actually recommended peak tea. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't know about peak tea until Tiffany was like, oh, you should try this. Their matcha is actually really good because we were having a whole argument about matcha and like, is it actually feasible to make good matcha at home? And she's like, oh yeah, you should try this brand. I am a fan of matcha, but I really don't like making it at home because it gets so complicated with peak tea their matcha is so simple it comes in these little packets i actually can take matcha on the go and the crazy thing about their matcha it's the sun goddess matcha you can take it on the go and you just have to shake it up in water like you don't have to do like the whole hot water process and side note don't freak out it's ceremonial grade matcha meaning it's the highest grade of matcha and you can drink it hot you can put it directly into cold water and it's so smooth like there's no clumps i don't know how they make it that good but peak tea, they're really peaky about their quality. Okay, sorry. They choose leaves from trees that are shaded for a lot longer, which means that there's more clarifying chlorophyll in it. And it's screened four times to ensure purity. I drink it every morning. I feel like my skin does feel a lot more hydrated. And I'm trying to focus on like the bounce of my skin these days. I want to maintain the jello skin. That's what the Koreans call it. I'm the Korean that calls it that. <laughs> but it's like um when you slap your face, your skin should like snap back. Don't slap your face. But right now I'm drinking the Peak Tea's BT Fountain. It's an electrolyte drink with skincare benefits. Their top quality ingredients are just easily absorbed into the body and you get maximized benefits. There's also no added sugars, preservatives, artificial ingredients, which are super important to me. And they both dissolve so quickly and so smoothly in both hot and cold water. And it's so interesting because when you do it in cold, it's refreshing. It's like a latte. And then this one is like a refreshing summer tea. But then you put it in hot water it's almost more floral it, it that this like aromatic experience comes out from it i also use the beaker and frother and let me tell you about this frother if you do anything right now click the link because you can get this frother and the beaker and this frother is the lamborghini of frothers it froths so well. You're like, okay, well, how do I get the beaker and frother for free? Because I got you. I got away, okay? For a limited time, Peak is offering 15% off plus two free bonus gifts, a beaker and a frother when you shop using my link. So make sure to use that link because this beaker is so cute. I feel like I'm a chemist and I also love that it has the ounces on the side so I know exactly how much water I need to put in. So convenient. And the frother, I'm talking Lamborghini, Aventador, Avengers. So make sure to shop my link and get your free gifts and your skin shall thank you. Thank you, Peak Tea, for sponsoring today's video and let's get into it. This is a doozy. It all starts with rumors, you know, rumors that Kim min -hee was having an affair with the married director of the movie. There's just a list of evidence that has been compiled by netizens that, that includes but is not limited to Kim min -hee and the director Hong. They would be up doing a panel about the movie with all the other characters, like all the other co-stars. And um, the two of them, they always would just stand so close or they would sit so close to each other. 
so close, like weirdly close. If you were to space out the distance between each of the professionals on stage, they look like a couple. And there was just this energy about them that seemed emotionally and even sad charged. Whenever Kimini was asked a question, I'm going to call her Mini. Whenever Mini was asked a question, Director Hong's face would light up. It would light up. It's as if he didn't give a rat's ass about the other people and he only cared when Mini was talking. And both of them were just suspiciously wearing the same simple gold band on their right hand ring finger. Typically a spot in Korea reserved for promise rings when you're dating someone. Which is strange, because director Hong is married, and as far as the public knew, Minnie wasn't dating anyone. It was just, it's just weird, you know? It was weird. So that movie is released in 2015, and people kind of see all these little press tours about it, and it's weird, but they kind of get over it. And then in 2016, Kim Minnie releases the next big movie. Which, side note, even while the right now, wrong then, the rumors were circulating, even director Hong's wife was kind of worried about the rumors. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Imagine your husband is working so closely with this beautiful young woman that is like the ideal of a lot of, a lot of just men. This is the ideal woman for men in Korea right now. But I think director Hong's wife, Mrs. Hong, comforted herself with the fact that you know, Minnie's in her early 30s. She's at her prime. She's at the peak of her career. My husband, director Hong, <laughs> mid to late 50s, like a solid 50 sex. There is no way with all the men that are probably trying to win Minnie over that she could even look at director Hong in any sort of way romantically. On top of that, he's married. He's been married for like 30 years. He has a, he has a daughter with Mrs. Hong. And besides... Director Hong had even invited Minnie over to their marital home, their family home, to have dinner with him and his wife during filming. And Minnie was really, really kind. Mrs. Hong really liked her. She was really attentive. Just overall a very sweet, sweet woman. That's what she thought, right? So one day, Mrs. Hong wakes up to a note left on the counter and she's thinking, okay, well, my husband probably left early for work and left me a note of like, hey, babe, I'm gonna go early to the studio today. She picks that note up and it reads... 30 years with you has been enough. Shut up. Bro, if you Bro. ever did that to me, just know I will hunt you down. I will go to the ends of this earth. 10 I'm not a years flat with you is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> nice save. <laughs> and he writes, now I want to live with the women I love. You don't have the charismatic qualities that I'm looking for in a woman. Bro. You should also leave the house more and try meeting other men. Bro, what? I gotta unzip my what? shirt. I'm getting riled up. Yeah? Like that kind of riled up? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. He didn't take a single item of clothing or any sentimental items. Like, not a single thing. It's like he wanted to start completely fresh. He didn't want any memories of his past or even his family. Nothing. But he's not divorced yet. He just walked out. Yeah. Allegedly, Mrs. Hong went to confront Kim Mini, the husband's mistress, if you will. And allegedly, Mrs. Hong was like, hey, is this true? Are you the one that my husband is in love with? Are you the woman that's trying to steal my husband? And why would you do this from me? And allegedly, Kim Mini responded, then you should have taken care to control your husband better. And allegedly, Mrs. Hong slapped her across the face. Oh my God. So... Well, let's talk about Kim Mini, because who who is she? What's going on, Kim Mini? Okay, I actually didn't know about this scandal much, okay? So I liked her in The Handmaiden, and then I tried to look for other movies that she was in, and then I never really dived deep into it until recently. I was like, oh, I want to watch The Handmaiden again. And then I found out about this divorce thing. And I was like, oh my God, I had no clue. Because when you look at Western sources, they're like Korean movies you need to watch. And then The Handmaiden is always on there. And it's like Kim Mini, the lead is like killing it, phenomenal. So you're like, oh yeah. And then, and then she's like one of the most hated women in South Korea right now. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't know. So Kim Mini started working in middle school. She was a model. She wasn't this um crazy Kim Mini actress yet. She also wasn't the Korean conventional ideal beauty standard, which is crazy because she's beautiful, but she has a very unique face. I think even to categorize her into the one of the four categories in China would be hard. The sweet, salty, spicy, bitter. Impossible. So a lot of Koreans just settle for calling her very charismatic. 
That's what everyone says. And I'm not sure. Like, I see what they're saying. Because I don't know. Her face almost has this poeticness to it when she's not smiling. She seems very wise and almost mysterious and poetic. She seems artsy. But then when she's smiling, she looks very youthful and genuine. And you know that thing where people say you can just tell whose faces are from the time? From the time? Like the time that we have phones. There was this new TikTok thing that were like, list of actors and actresses that cannot play period pieces. Like they just have a face that looks like they know what Instagram is. So they can't play oh, like the oh, 1800s dramas. Got it. Do you know what uh-huh. I mean? Yeah, There's yeah, just yeah. some people who look like they have Instagram accounts. Right. Kim Minhee is not one of those people. In fact, she's very diverse in all the roles that she took. Like she could play it all. She's got a very unique look. People say that she looks calm, mysterious, but also almost sensual. Like people say that she has a very sexy aura about her. And it's very hard to pinpoint exactly why or how. It's weird. It's weird. She is very charismatic. Side note, I think it was rumored that she did, or it was rumored that she dated Lee Jung Jae, um, the Squid Game lead in her like early stages. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Okay. Just yeah, a lot of girlfriend it. too, huh? I yeah. Mean, I guess honestly, he's old now, I guess but. he's kind of a salute. <laughs> <laughs> we should start just calling guys salutes for nothing. So anyway, the script for the movie, Right Now, Wrong Then, lands on her desk. She's done a few acting gigs in, here and there. She's been in a few movies and some shows. And if I'm not mistaken, the director of this movie, director Hong, okay? Is this the the guy? Yeah. Okay. Personally requested the script be sent over to Kim Mini to see if she would be interested in the project. Which makes sense. She's garnering a lot of attention at this point. And if he could get her to lead in this movie, his movie would most likely do really well. Mini was intrigued. The script for the project, I mean, it didn't feel overly produced like the other projects she had been involved in. This one felt a lot more intimate, experimental. Like it had all of the elements of an indie film. It felt more artistic in a sense. There weren't special effects. There weren't all these crazy sets, big budgets. It was more about truly channeling in these mundane conversations, but showing your micro expressions. A lot of people say that's what director Hong excelled at is mundane elements and try to make the actors bring out their emotions during it. Honestly, I think he was okay. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen the movie. I mean, people really like hype this guy up. Okay. I don't know. I saw a trailer and I was like, I don't know if it's my vibe. <laughs> it, just, it doesn't seem like a movie whose main priority is hitting new highs at the box office. It felt more like a passion project for storytelling. So she's like, you know what? Let's do it. She calls her manager to tell director Hong, I'm interested. I want to do this. When they start filming, Kim Mini instantly feels a connection with director Hung, okay? Okay, side note, Mini actually got along really well with all of the directors that she's ever worked with, and that's probably why she's so successful. There was always this connection there, and it translated into movie magic, if you will. So her connecting with director Hung isn't something strange. It's part of the job. But she's like, but why he kind (laughs) of... Like, there was something about him that was different that felt, ooh, oomph, you know what I mean? Like, the way that he spoke wasn't like most directors. Most directors, they seem so cool and artsy-fartsy from the outside, but then the minute that they start talking, you're like, oh, this is just like a normal ass dude. That's like kind of good at his job, right? But director Hong, he was so passionate and so emotionally intense. That's what everyone says about him. Like, you meet this guy, he doesn't ask you small talk. He doesn't, he's not like, how's the weather? Oh, like, how was the last film you were in? Did you like it? How was the press tour? This guy, he seems like he wants to get to know you on a spiritual, soulful level. Is he hot? No. Not conventionally. Are you but sure? Passion makes people hot, I guess. Here, you want to see a picture of him? Sure, yeah. You say how he old? He looks like a film director. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And he's 50, 56, you said? Yeah, like 20 years older than her. Let me see. 20 something years older. Here's them together. Oh, oh. Whoa. I know. Were you expecting like, um, yeah, yeah. he looks like my grandpa. A little bit. Um, oh yeah, I don't know about that, bro. <laughs> it just felt like when director Hong asked you a question, he was so intense that he genuinely wanted to know an answer. He didn't want to know a superficial answer. Like if he asked you, what's your deepest insecurity on set? I don't think he wanted you to be like, hee hee. Like sometimes I feel like I forget my lines. You know what I mean? No, he wants you to be like, I feel like I'm never good enough. 
I feel like today will be the day that everyone realizes I'm nothing special and they'll click out of the next video and never come back and I will be abandoned just like when I was in my childhood and it'll bring me back to my infant days where I've had no one and all I could do was cry, shriek, shriel. Like those are the answers that he's looking for. Yes, yes. It's weird. You know what I mean? Like that's that kind of guy. And I feel like half the people are either going to love it and another half of the people are just going to and hate it. I think it's going to be a hit or miss. A lot of people said that they were thrown off about it. Yeah. Thrown um, off about what? Director Hong's like energy. Oh. He, they just said that he was so emotionally intense that it was, it was just too much. It was too much. Yeah. But most people agreed that he almost had a bewitching nature about him. It's like you're under his spell. He's a cool guy. Interesting guy. Well, I don't know about cool. So we're going to get into Director Hong later on. There's some shady sh that happens but anyway we're gonna we're gonna revisit this enigmatic personality and maybe because she's on set filming this charged movie about how she falls in love with a married film director and knows that she shouldn't maybe that just pushes her attraction to director hong even more it's like that tweet how do you work with someone in a movie where all the circumstances are set up to show off your chemistry like and you guys are put in these intentionally emotionally set charged scenes like how do you not fall in love with the co-star but you know like when they're filming there's like 50 million people with a billion cameras around yeah you know when when, when you pan out the camera it's like a really not romantic yes. <laughs> situation you yes. know yes when is it inevitable that life will imitate art and again i'm not condoning it i'm just asking the questions that the philosophers of today's age should be focused on like forget the meaning of life forget the purpose of living i want to know if you can make out with a co-star on set and not fall in love with that person that is the important question of today's day and age it is said that they both tried to fight off the connection on set while they're working together but there was no avoiding it they couldn't hold it back they both confessed that they loved each other and it's alleged that both of them were so into each other the idea of even being apart for even a mere moment a second one second was too much for them that could probably explain why it seems like they literally were not hiding it well during their press tour. But even then, it was just rumors at that point. So a year passes since the movie's release and the rumors come out. And Kim min is even more under the spotlight because her newest movie, The Handmaiden, Korean cult classic, just released. And everyone is like, oh my god, this is the it girl of South Korea. People were upset with her the movie itself was controversial because it is probably the most famous korean movie that has an lgbtq plot line mm. yes so there was a lot of conversation about it there were a lot of discussions and because she was playing like a bisexual woman or was she gay i don't remember but you know she was part of the community she was playing in the movie people were like wait she plays that too well and so while everyone's trying to dig into her personal life People are like, wait, I just spotted her eating lunch with Director Hong. And everyone's like, Director Hong? He's not even the director for The Handmaiden. I mean, maybe they have new projects coming up, but this is weird. Like, you don't really usually go on a lunch date with your director. This is not common in Korea. Usually you meet with your managers. It's like a whole thing. You meet at your agencies. It's, it's a thing, you know? So they thought it was weird. But then more news came out. Like, they were constantly spotted here and there together. And everyone was like, that's like one too many times. Fine, you have lunch with the director because you're working on a new project. But to be constantly out, like, at cafe, running errands, like, come on. Mm. It's a little weird. It's not even like a bunch of people are there. And it's just so constant. And with the hype of her new movie, everyone wants to know what's going on. These rumors start spiraling into this big snowball that she can't not address. The couple decide to publicly announce their relationship, a.k.a. their affair. March 2017, the South Korean entertainment industry goes into a collective meltdown, like nuclear meltdown. There are so many layers to why everyone flipped sh and lost their mind okay the first layer is that people don't like the fact that director hong cheated has a kid cheated on his family and she knew Mini knew that he was married and knew that he had a kid they had an affair but the second layer is they were lifting their chins up and not being ashamed of what they had done they said that there is nothing to be ashamed of in finding real love and this is where i'm conflicted okay because i do feel like they're genuinely in love 
But like, does that make what they did excusable? No, but it does seem like the two do share some sort of like deep connection. It's been like eight years since this happened and they're like obsessed with each other. Yeah, but, but every still. cheating couple thinks they're in love. That's yes. why they cheat, right? Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> okay. And side note, when netizens heard the breaking news, they were just so confused. Like another layer of this was just absolute shock. Like imagine being the most successful woman, being called the it girl of South Korea, being in the top league of the country and you've got a-list actors falling at their knees asking for a singular date with you just to impress you for one moment like you could grate cheese on some of these guys abs and they're just like foaming at the mouth for her and she's like no that one and everyone was like we don't understand especially because of the age difference they are 22 years apart which personally i don't care about age gap couples especially because she's in her 30s i feel like she's a fully formed adult but i will say it was odd director hong's daughter was in her 20s at this point kim Minhee was in her 30s she's closer in age to his daughter than him which i'm sure that adds like a whole nother layer of trickiness to their relationship and people just had a very very physical reaction to the visuals of seeing the couple together. It was a lot, especially in like a traditional South Korean culture. It was just a lot. Everyone lost their minds. It was a bloodbath online. Tabloids, even media, mainstream media outlets were going at it. And one by one, Kim Min was dropped by every single brand. If any of her former co-stars even said anything nice about her from now on going forward, they would be in their scandals. Like their own mini scandal mm. of like, how could you support a man stealer, a home wrecker? Everyone hated director Hong for cheating on his wife, but they hated Kim Mini more for being a home wrecker, which I think is sexist, okay? Because he's the yeah. one that's married. I think you can dislike both of them equally, but if you had to hate one more, it should be director Hong. Huh? Like, yeah. Let's be real. That doesn't make sense to me, okay? I'm not saying what she did was right, but I'm just saying he has more responsibility in this situation, I think. I mean, she's got a lot of fault, but he's a little bit more than her. I don't think she's innocent. She knew, but still, he's the one that's married and with the kid. The affair sparks emotional outrage in netizens, and it's about to get even messier. Because did you know in South Korea that if you fork up a marriage, you cannot be the one that files for divorce? So let's say you cheat on your partner. You cannot file for divorce now. No, oh, that's awkward. Yeah. Only your partner can file for divorce. It's um the concept of you can't just go and betray your partner and abandon them. Okay. So now the power is in the victim partner's hands. No, that's a sticky situation. Yeah. Very sticky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very uncomfy, <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm trying mm -hmm. to wrap my head around that concept. Yeah, so apparently Korean divorce laws are still rooted somewhat in Confucius principles. Mm. Mm -hmm. My boy. <laughs> <laughs> my boy. <laughs> my guy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> meaning it's not considered moral for someone to find someone new and then use that as grounds to desert their current family. Which means if you cheat on your spouse, for as long as your spouse does not file for divorce, you are still legally and financially obligated to treat them as your spouse. Now, I highly doubt that everyone follows that rule, though. I feel like a lot of couples will just abandon, like, will just be separated but not legally separated oh that's even better than like they don't even have to pay life support or life support <laughs> since they're alimony, still alimony. okay but they're still married yes so yes. they don't have to pay any money correct yes i don't know i feel like the if no i feel like you could sue for that yeah okay. i think the whole point is to protect the spouse that gets cheated on well director hong tries to file for divorce and his wife rejects it rejected <laughs> yes and she said that there was no way that she could win a young and beautiful woman you know she's like i am not competition for kimini but what i can do what i can do what i will do is wait she said she will wait until the day she dies <laughs> Damn. even Damn. she's a bit controversial in korea because people are like let it go let it go you know yeah i mean yeah what can you say man she well, she's she's mad <laughs> yeah i mean i don't think it's our place to judge yeah. yeah she can do whatever she wants okay but she said that she is going to wait until the day that she dies and she believes that her husband is going to come back she says oh <laughs> that is it. she believes the husband will die first <laughs> it's gone there be, be there first <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'll get his money, okay? <laughs> she's like, okay, we've been married for what, 30 years? I don't think that he's going to forget that. She said that she can wait for director Hong to change his mind. She confessed publicly that before this happened, director Hong actually had an affair with another one of his staff members. This is like early on in his career. But when she found out, he ended it, and she hoped that this would be the same situation with Kim Mini. She publicly stated, I won't be getting a divorce. I'm going to wait for my husband. I'm sure the waiting will be torturous, but that man, I trust, will return. Oh, she's doing this because she loves him. Yeah. Oh, no. People have Aww. a lot of mixed feelings. Yeah, on one hand, a lot of people support Mrs. Hong because, yeah, it's really sad. I mean, she spent most of her life with this man in this relationship and then he just ups and leaves. Like, it must have been so shocking. Just the sudden change in her life to start over. Like, what? But others said, you know, maybe it's time to let it go. You know, don't harbor these negative feelings. Like, you're only hurting yourself at the end of the day. Like, do you think he cares if you wait until the day you die? Like, look at him. Does he look like he cares? Some netizens also felt like she was being oddly petty by not granting a divorce. I don't know. I guess the sentiment was like, why would you want to be with someone like that anyway? I don't think it's our place to judge, but I can see all sides. But I do think even if director Hong was able to get a divorce right off the bat, everyone in South Korea still absolutely hated them. Like you have to remember just on a global scale, this is pretty forked up what they did. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's no denying it. Do I think that they need to be banished from the industry and never find work again and starve and never put food on the table? I mean, probably not, but like, it's bad. They hurt a lot of people, but add in the context that this happened in South Korea, a widely traditional country where public figures are held to the utmost highest standards. This was probably one of the biggest affair scandals to date in the entertainment industry. And adultery, socially, can sometimes be treated as harshly as like a literal felony, straight up assault and battery. Which is ironic because in 2016, there was a case study of married men in South Korea and about 50% of them stated they cheated on their wives. 50? 50. So the real number. It's probably 90. <laughs> it's 100. <laughs> yeah. And the worst part is 40% of them were like, oh, but sex work isn't considered cheating. So the number is probably so <laughs> oh, much higher, shit. okay? I mean, through the roof. So I'm just imagining like a ton of enraged people at home, but like Loki, they're doing the same thing. Still, not excusing the couple's behavior, but like you kind of have to admit, it's a little ironic. Like they put the F-E in ironic, you know what I mean? Did you get my joke? No. Sorry, this is the face of someone who's very satisfied with that joke, okay? But there's more. The drama is never ending with this one. But apparently, director Hong left his daughter a note, his 20-something-year-old daughter, and it was just completely devoid of any affection or even just remorse. Allegedly, he wrote to his daughter, I found someone new. She gives me a newfound courage. I'm going to go be with her now. That was it. Allegedly, he never apologized, never even kept in touch. In fact, it's alleged that his daughter was studying abroad in the U.S. and he just stopped sending her money, which is just so messed up if it's true. Like your daughter is in a foreign country, she's studying. I mean, there is some sort of expectation that you've been financially supporting her and then all of a sudden, nothing, nada? Huh. Yeah. It's also alleged that while Kim min and director Hong were having an affair, like right before he was about to file for divorce, Mrs. Hong was busy. She wasn't even like a stay-at-home wife spending his director money, right? Director Hong was out there making movies, having this affair, and Mrs. Hong took care of his parents. Apparently, director Hong's mom had Alzheimer's and needed constant care. Guess who was doing it? Mrs. Hong. On top of that, sources said that Mrs. Hong would be the only one to remember Dr. Hong's father's death anniversary. So she would make sure to honor his life during his death anniversaries. Like she was the one planning all of this. And if it isn't already so messy, Mrs. Hong and Kim Minnie's mom get into it. Oh, yeah. So you know how Mrs. Hong tried to go to Kim Minnie and was like, how could you do this? And she was basically like, well, you should have taken better care of your husband. Now, instead of appealing to Kim Minnie herself to leave her husband alone, she thought, maybe, maybe I could talk to her mom. Maybe they're closer in age. The supposed text messages were leaked later on. And Mrs. Hong writes, please help your daughter control her heart. I'm in so much pain. 
Kim Minhee's mom responds, would a wife whose husband cheat be in more pain or would a mom whose daughter loves a married man be in more pain? Mrs. Hong says, it seems you don't understand the heart of a woman whose husband has been stolen. Ask someone close to you who might be having a harder time. Mrs. Kim said, I am the one that's crying inside. Your daughter is an adulteress who broke apart a happy family. I raised my daughter with immense care. Do not speak so thoughtlessly. This is not the best situation to be telling me that you raised your daughter with immense care. Mrs. Kim responds, you are also a mother who raises a daughter. Mrs. Hong says, this is a situation where it wouldn't even be enough for you to apologize a hundred times for raising your daughter wrong and causing so much pain to one family. I'm sure if Mr. Hong realized something, he would return. So the two are kind of playing this, who's the real victim in this game, okay? And it's strange. On one hand, I guess you could argue that Mrs. Kim didn't raise her daughter right if her daughter knew that she was falling in love with a married man and still chose to do it. But on the other hand, you could argue that Mrs. Kim, Kim min mom, while not the main victim in this story or in this situation, is maybe collateral damage. Like, she probably never wanted this. And I'm sure maybe parents can understand, like, what kind of mom wants her daughter to lose her whole career for a man, let alone a married man, become a social pariah, become blacklisted from the industry that she works in? Like, you would much rather your daughter marry someone her own age that's not married, that's also an actor. And like, you're, you're thinking, my daughter had so much potential. As a parent, so, you'd be so upset. At the, this point, her career is Gone. Gone. She wow. got dropped and blacklisted like right away. So she basically chose him. Yes. Over her whole career. Career. Everything. That's like at the peak of her career. Yeah. And this is South Korea where you know, like as an actor, you know you're going to wow. lose your career. It's not like America where everyone has practically cheated on everyone. <laughs> and then you're like, well, I'm still going to go to their concert, though. It's like different. It's different in South Korea. It's weird. I'm not saying it's better in South Korea. I think it's worse, but it's weird. Wow. So other people come out to publicly state that they also worked with the duo on set. They never, ever tried to hide their relationship on set. It really bothered a lot of netizens that they were just so shameless, like just so blatant with their affair. Other people came forward to state that director Hong had a weird obsession with women. They predicted that he actually wasn't into Kim min and it was just some sort of phase. So their opinions were from working with him. He was obsessed with the identity of a woman. So if you see his films, his list of films, most of them center around women, the plight of being a woman, the woman's love journey, a woman's journey into motherhood, a woman's journey into finding herself, a woman's journey into independence. It's a lot about women. Some people speculate that he's just so obsessed with women. <laughs> And the story of women. I mean, honestly, we, we all are. So, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, same. I'm obsessed with women, okay? And it just seems like he really wanted to connect to his main female leads a little bit too much. A lot of them felt like he was crossing the professional line. Um, I didn't see any reports that they're accusing him of like essay or anything like that, just to be clear. But a lot of them felt like he was a bit overbearing and a bit too personal on set. Like, no one was like trying to call him out for anything that serious, right? But it was just like, mm, I guess it just wasn't professional for us. Like mm -hmm. he was just too emotionally involved. I mm -hmm. think he was really into like, this is my vibe that I get, that he was really into method actors, method, method actresses, and he was just so into even being a part of that process of the main female lead. And I think most female leads, the professionals were like, um what are you like i'm done on set today i don't need to like keep being this person i don't need to have these conversations with you right now i'm trying to go home so that i can make an eye on time for on call tomorrow but he was just a lot another one of his female leads said that she felt like she was kind of under his spell at one point she had to snap out of it and stop going to meetings with him alone because she felt overwhelmed and burdened by his intensity and his emotions uh, i think i know that yeah really yeah. Maybe it's me. Anyway, a lot of netizens start speculating that Kim Minhee fell for his spells. And um, side note, some people argued that there was no way that director Hong would have been able to deliver his films without having some sort of emotional intensity on set. So there were a lot of people defending him. They're like, a creative genius is going to be a little weird. I don't know. Like, how do you guys feel about that statement?
But back to the timeline. So when news breaks of the affair, director Hong and Kim Mini, they've got a target on their backs. They flee the country. Not as fugitives, okay? <laughs> but just, they're like basically social outcasts. Like the social backlash was going to be so intense. I firmly believe though, there is nowhere in this planet that paparazzi cannot get to you. If Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, or like Taylor Swift, if they're taking a tour of the Amazon mother freaking rainforest, you bet your ass paparazzi is in the trenches just like amongst the crocodiles trying to get that shot for the hollywood reporter reporters from all over the world are following this couple everywhere because they can like sell it to the korean tabloids you know what i mean mm. C- following them everywhere i mean they were chased and they did not really hide. Like, yes, they fled the country, but they were out running errands and they were inseparable. They straight up looked like they were drunk in love. All they needed is each other. All they wanted is each other. And I don't know. I don't know if they thought that the news would eventually die down and they could come back to Korea and try to work a little or if they had any idea how bad, truly how bad it was going to be. I'm not too certain. But the two, they keep working and producing movies. They have a small team for production. All of the movies are incredibly low budget. They hire Korean talent. Um, None of them are big names, obviously, because, you know, they likely wouldn't have the budget. And also big names wouldn't want to be associated with them because it would basically kill their own careers. Yeah. It's always director Hong as the director and mostly Kim Min-hee as the female lead. And they come out with like a movie every one or two years. It's a lot of movies. Yeah. So they're still working. Yeah. A lot of their films do really well in the indie film space. Um, They won several Berlin Awards, a Silver Bear Award, and some of their films are recognized internationally, which usually South Korea eats that up because to be fair, to be fair, defending my people, to be fair, South Korea is geographically a tiny nation, okay? Like it's a tiny, tiny little thing. And their geographical position on the global scale, like in the world, does not really ever equate to success. In fact, it's weird that South Korea is that successful of a nation. They probably have one of the highest levels of soft power right now, so it's impressive. And yes, South Koreans love when their stuff is international and when they get international acclaim, right? They will talk about it. Parasite is all my parents could talk about for months. Even my sister and Andrew, and I'm like, did y'all even watch the movie? But like, it's like, you know, we don't care. It's the straight up Korean pride right there. But anything, Kim Minnie and director Hong were recognized in internationally. South Korean media outlets were like crickets. <laughs> crickets, crickets, crickets. Not talking about it. Not even going to address it, okay? Uh, one of their movies actually did get a lot of attention in South Korea, though. It was the first movie after the affair became public. It mm-hmm. received nonstop attention. The film is called <laughs> On the Beach at Night Alone. And it's... <laughs> Get this. It's about an actress that loses her glory, (laughs) loses her success because she falls in love with a married man. (laughs) Wow. And it just feels like they're literal life stories. So a lot of people were like, you've got to be kidding me. I have to watch because I need to know if there's something revealed in there. You know, it's so Uh bold. I don't even know what's going on. Kim Mini actually got a lot of praise for that one, too. Everyone said that her acting skills evolved. And that's kind of where they're at. I do think that a lot of people miss Kim min I mean, her talent really is undeniable and everyone loved The Handmaiden. It's just rough because people hate her as an individual, but they love her work. So this is truly the dilemma in South Korea with her. Now that time has passed, you know, right when this issue happened, everyone blew up. But now that time has passed, it's the question of when do you separate the art from the artist? Can you guys separate art from the artist? Like, what are your thoughts on this one? It's interesting. Anyway, side note, everyone is still joking that their relationship, you know, the movie Right Now, Wrong Then? Uh People are joking wrong then and wrong now too. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, okay. And I will say that there is a bit of misogyny in this situation. So director Hong has officially produced like 47 films in his career. He pushes out like a film a year. And, you know, for some sexist reason, a lot of people are able to separate director Hong's career and his personal life a bit more. They're able to separate that art from the artist a bit more when it comes to director Hong. I mean, if you think about it, like it's crazy, but he's the main perpetrator, I would say. But the only thing that he really lost was some work. Not all of his work. 
some work and his reputation as like a nice family man, right? I mean, side note, he's even a professor at a university in Seoul right now teaching filmmaking. So he's not really that touched by this. Okay. And I, I do think that's interesting. Um, Please let me know if you guys agree. I find that whenever a man does something bad, okay, this is not in all situations, but just consistently what I've noticed, especially maybe like with all these new research that we're doing into these Korean cases, whenever a talented male individual does something bad there is a conversation of oh do we separate the art from the artist but whenever a female talented individual does something bad i don't feel like that conversation doesn't even happen really yeah because i remember there were like a bunch of musical artists that were had like essayed or domestic violence and people were like no we need to separate art from the artist there was mm-hmm. conversations but i'm like you know if a female artist had done even 10 percent of that there, we wouldn't even be talking about that. We mm. wouldn't even be like, guys, when do we separate like art from the artist? We'd be like, oh my God, burn her at the stake. She's a witch. Yeah, he's fine. I mean, it's just kind of like, is did he really lose? You know, she kind of lost everything. I would say that she definitely sacrificed more for this relationship. She lost all of her jobs. She was dropped from all of her brands, her agency. She actually had to reimburse a brand. So in Korea... If you're about to do a brand deal, like you're about to be a brand ambassador and you do a photo shoot, they can actually sue you to recover all the cost because they're not getting that money back because they're not releasing that campaign. So not only was she losing all of her jobs, she lost more money on top of that. The whole industry turned her back on her. So her co-star for The Handmaiden won an award and mentioned her in the award speech because how do you not? You know, how do you Mm -hmm. not? And she got almost canceled, like bullied for even mentioning Kim Minhee's name. So yeah, she gave up everything. And it seems like the only way that she is getting work right now is by featuring in her husband's work. I hope that she's also a big part of the production. I think that she is, you know, it feels like that. But I don't know, it's just a lot. The fact that they're still together to this day, though, I think prolongs their social exclusion from South Korea. A lot of netizens are actually waiting for them to break up so that they can do the whole I told you so parade. It's kind of sick and twisted. It's like the whole look what you did to yourself. Now you have no careers and no partner. Like they really want to say that. So they're constantly waiting for news that they broke up or they're like weirdly constantly waiting for news that they're pregnant. It's weird. Yeah. Mm. But they look very happy and in love still. There are others saying that Kim Minhee looks more like director Hong's caretaker than anything. Yeah, a lot of netizens also try to dig at her for her looks now. They're saying that director Hong is a vampire that sucked her of her youthfulness and energy and success. They said that she looks way more old and way more tired now. She's also lost a ton of weight, which makes her less look less youthful. That's what they're saying. But I'm like, but guys, she's in her 40s. You do know that women don't look 20 for the rest of their lives? Like, is this new information to you? I think she looks beautiful. I think she looks phenomenal. But like, yeah, she does look older from when she was 30 because she's 40. That usually is what happens. It's weird. I didn't know it either until yesterday. Okay. So also the two of them still visit South Korea often. And Kim min is often seen driving director Hong to and from campus where he teaches. And people say she's like an assistant. She gave up her career to be an assistant, which honestly, I think is a little much. Okay. Because I feel like who's getting off on that narrative? Like you've never driven your spouse somewhere or your partner somewhere. Like, you don't have, like, a designated driver in the relationship. It's weird, right? I think they're doing just fine. It's been about eight years since they started the affair. They're still going strong. Technically, Director Hong is still married to Mrs. Hong. (laughs) Technically, Minnie is considered a mistress, I guess, if you really want to be crazy with it. But every now and then, they'll make an appearance, and they look like lovebirds. They look like they can't keep their hands off of each other. They look like they love each other. One netizen wrote, the whole of South Korea seems to hate them, but they are blinded for each other's love. Yeah, they also seem to be doing well financially. Um, I don't know how much money they amassed while they were working in the industry, but they were recently spotted luxury shopping in Paris. And they seem content. And uh, it seems like Mrs. Hong is still at home, waiting waiting for him to come back. And that is the story of how one of the most well-known, recognized, iconic Korean actresses in the South Korean industry was blacklisted. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. What are your thoughts on this? 
please let me know in the comments. Now I I have to watch Handmaiden with a yes. with a different lens. We should watch it. I love that movie. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're gonna go watch the Handmaiden. Make sure to check out Peak Tea. Link to the description. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.